in each of this uh, unit that we have discussed in this sessions okay almost more than 62 lectures we have conducted online okay and then uh, we have discussed uh, very basic uh, things starting from very basic things of phgl then we go for the very log uh, design also then we have seen what is mean by state diagram we have seen uh, different uh, commercial devices available in the market and, and after that we have designed certain applications uh, we have written vhdl code for that application okay so that uh, this part we have completed now again as we have time more to uh, re revise our uh, this uh, basics okay so we are again starting from the first unit and then we will discuss about all these things now earlier uh, whenever we were discussing uh, these things that time we have not used uh, xilinx isc okay that means practically we have not seen some of the application though we have we are doing practicals okay so in that we are this, uh, doing all that uh, that circuits okay we are uh, simulating this vhdl code for all these circuits but once again now whenever we are going to revise this concept that time we will once uh, we are going to simulate this program so that you will get idea what is there uh, or how to write the code what are the uh, problems that are arises or what are the errors that comes when we are doing certain mistakes so that we are going to see once again while uh, revising this concept okay so let us start from the first unit uh, that is a introduction to hdl can anybody tell me what is mean by eda our topic's name is introduction to eda tool and vhdl programming so tell me what is mean by eda Herschel, what is mean by idea? Hi, madam. I call now. What is mean by idea? Idea. Electronic design automation. Yes, it is a electronic design automation, or in another words, we say it as a ECAD. that means it is a electronic computer aided design okay. so uh, as we know that whenever we are designing any electronic circuits we go from the transistors then transistors that are connected in such a way that it will form gate and then these gates are connected in such a way that it will uh, form a resistors and then there will be certain transfer of the input and output at this resistor level which we call it as a rtl level and then there is a graphic design system that is a uh, gds okay so these are the different uh, tools uh, that we need to consider uh, whenever we are designing any electronic circuit okay so vhdl that is the one of the language that is used to design electronic circuit okay so this as we are discussing just about the digital circuits in which uh, there will be a uh, logic level only 0 and 1 so we are we can design this electronic circuit digital circuits uh, using vhdl language okay so uh, it is a hardware description language that means whatever is the hardware that we can write or that we can describe uh, in certain computer uh, 
language okay and this vhdl that is one of that uh, disc, uh, hardware description language so long form of that vhdl is a very high speed integrated circuit hardware description like okay so it uh, this is the history that is given about this vhdl that it was uh, first uh, developed in the 1980s for the standardized method of describing electronic system and then in 1987 ieee standardized this uh, vhdl in reference manual by the name that is ieee vhdl language reference manual uh, that is a draft of standard version 1076b and then after that it was uh, ratified in december 1987 as ieee 10761987 uh 87 okay so now why there was a motivation for vhdl because most of the digital circuits that are complex in nature and then as the size of these uh, electronic circuits that is increasing uh, that means actually number of components in the electronic systems that are increasing but we want to reduce the size of this component okay that circuit so uh as if the circuit is complex then we cannot build it on a breadboard so because there will be number of chips then number of components that will be more and then interconnects uh, that will be also more now if the number of chips that are more then length of that interconnects that will be also more and that may uh, introduce uh, unwanted capacitors uh, in the circuitry so uh, to avoid this we need to have certain ic okay uh, that means a single chip and for that we need uh, we use a vhdl language so whatever is the circuit that we can build in a single chip and then uh, we can simulate that before uh, committing to hardware okay that means just uh, before uh, implementing it on a hardware we can simulate it and then we can verify whether that circuit is a correct one or not that means whatever we have done in a testing of uh, these circuits combinational as well as sequential circuit where we can test all these circuits before actually uh, manufacturing of these ic so uh, that uh, we can do we can uh, have a timing analysis also so uh, that uh, could be done using this vhdl language and that is why we go for selecting a vhdl language now uh, besides this vhdl language there is a one more language that is a widely used that is a verilog but that we are going to discuss in the next minute right now we will discuss about this vhdl only so these are the different uh, uh, advantages why using vhdl okay so that is a quick time to market then it allows designers to quickly develop and design requiring tens of thousands of logic gates Okay, so at a time you can develop uh, thousands of logic gates, so that is an advantage. Then provides powerful high-level constructs for describing complex logic. That is one more advantage. Then it supports modular design methodology and multiple level of hierarchy. And then it is a one language for design and simulation. Then it allows creation of device-independent designs that are portable to multiple vendors. vendors okay and it is good for asic migration then it allows a user to pick any synthesis tool vendor or device okay so that is again one more advantage of this vhdl language now what are the basic features of vhdl one basic feature of this uh, vhdl that is it is concurrent that means you can parallelly process uh, different functions or different processes so that is a one uh, important feature of this vhdl language then it also supports sequential statements that means though it can uh, process uh, 
so that it can execute uh, multiple processes at a time but at the same time it uh, supports sequential statements also that means you can execute uh, say statements sequentially also when you are writing the that statements in certain process then whatever are the statements in that process that will be executed one by one then it all supports for test and simulation then it is a strongly typed language that means whatever is the type data type that you are mentioning for each of the port or each of the variable then uh, you have to uh, mention it clearly so that it is a otherwise it will give a error so it is a strongly typed language that is the one important feature of phpl so that means suppose uh, you are using somewhere that uh, sub a is a one input port and that is a std underscore logic that means it is a uh, that uh, type of data okay but it is a single bit but in somewhere uh, another time whenever you are calling it or whenever you are assigning this value a to certain another variable that time if that variable is of another type okay if suppose it is a unsigned number okay then it will not match okay and then in that case it will give us a error so that is uh, you have to look for whether you are uh, mentioning a proper type of that data or not that is a very important in page dl then it supports hierarchies so that is a uh, you need to compile all the program or you need to simulate in a proper hierarchy okay so that is a very important concept uh, in a vhdf then it supports for vendor defined libraries so whatever are the libraries that are defined by vendor that can be also supported by vhdf uh, uh, that means suppose certain user that wants to include certain libraries uh, in program that is possible in vhdf then it supports multi valued logic okay so that is also possible in a vhdf if uh, any data type has set multi values then that is supported by the vhdf so these are the basic features of vhdf then if we look for the levels of abstraction and presentation representation and abstraction in any circuit then uh, we can uh, represent any digital system into different levels of abstraction okay so this uh, keeps the description and design of complex system that is manageable so if uh, you have any very big circuit okay which has certain cpu then it has certain control units it has timer it has uh, different sensors that to be uh, connected with that cpu and then it has uh, a many number of registers that are used in the circuitry so uh, you can have a representation in such a way that it will uh, divide that circuitry in uh, different parts okay so that means levels of different levels of abstract abstraction and then uh, because of that you could manage this uh, circuit easily so here we can see that this uh, circuit can be divided into three uh, basically two different parts one is the behavioral uh, level of abstraction where we can mean uh, we can write certain code or algorithmic behavior where that we can mention or we can have the data flow modeling of that circuitry or another way that is a structural type right? okay so this behavioral modeling that could be uh, lead towards structural modeling that means where there will be component and interconnection and then both the behavioral as well as structural modeling that can be used to implement a physical uh, structure okay so for that you can use this so actually uh, we can write a program in the way that is a, how that circuit is going to behave or what will be the boolean expression that means how the data uh, will flow in that register so in that way we can uh, divide that circuitry or what will be the structures that are going to be used in that circuitry depending on that we can represent that circuitry and then after that we can have the actual physical implementation of that circuitry okay so now uh, these different levels that we are going to see 
whenever we are going to write a program vhdl program for deep brain surgery okay now actually uh, when we go for any circuit design okay so if we are going for vhdl design flow the first part uh, there will be a synthesis and the another part that is a simulation okay so whenever we are going to design any circuitry we will first review specification that means what is going to happen what uh, in that circuitry or what is design will uh, give us result okay so that specifications are already we have received and then depending on that we write a vhdl code that means suppose we want a certain circuitry in such a way that if both the inputs are high then only output should be high okay maji garaj kai hai mala dono inputs jar high asti taras mala output high manje suppose mi jar temperature controller room madhe arrange karat ase to mala kay pahije temperature pan high pahije ani jar samja tithe person asel tya room madhe available to mala fan on karaycha hai okay that means what are my condition my first condition is that there should be a person in the room okay and then another condition is that if the temperature is more than that of 28 degree suppose okay then only i want to turn on the fan or i want to turn on the ac okay so that means if both these inputs now for my circuitry my input will be if there is a presence of human being in the loop room and another input is that if the temperature is more than that of the threshold that i have said okay ya doni peksha jar majha input jasti asel tar mala output high pahije manje mala fan on vhayla pahije manje tithe kay jhala pahije tithe current flow vhayla pahije ta fan cha circuitry madhe ani jar current flow vhayla pahije manje tithe majha input he kay pahije high pahije okay so that means these are the specifications that i have already received and from that i am going to write the code so my code uh, actual my conditions are when both the inputs are high output is high so depending on that i will going to write a vhdl code okay so it may be a behavioral code or you can write go for the data flow modeling okay so whatever abstraction level i can use and then i will write a vhdl code now after that what we do we use a uh, or we generate a rtl functional let Yes. Okay. So now you must have seen that whenever we are simulating any VHDL code, we just uh, have a RTL schematic for that. Okay. That means we what we are doing there, we are generating a RTL functional netlist, and we are uh, looking for whatever are the different registers or different uh, components that will be there in depending on that code. Okay. And then we do the simulation of that RTL schematic. okay so rtl functional simulation that will be there okay at the same time this vhdl code that will be having analysis and synthesis part and then in a simulation we could have uh, generate a post synthesis functional at least or post as well as post synthesis functional simulation that can be done now after this synthesis part has been completed we go for the place and route okay so we are going for the placing of all these components routing all these uh, printer connections uh, in the that application in such a way that it will take minimum area okay so with a minimal area uh, we need to represent that application uh, circuitry and so that we will do afterwards manje apan pahilanda kay karto ki vhdl code lihnar hai vhdl code lihna ki tyacha sathi cha rtl schematic apan generate karto फंक्शनल नेटलिस्ट ज्यादा जनरेट करतो सिमुलेशन करतो सिमुलेशन जर करेक्ट तर फंक्शनलिस हे सगळं जर करेक्ट असेल तर त्याच्यानंतर आपण काय करतो प्लेस अँड राऊट करतो ओके म्हणजे जे कम्पोनंट तुमचे आहेत ते सध्या तर तुम्ही जेव्हा बघितलं असेल प्रत्येक वेळेला की एका पर्टिक्युलर प्लेसला आहेत की जेणेकरून आपल्याला ते सर्किट खूप इझी आहे दिसत पण प्रत्येक वेळेला आपल्याला तसंच पाहिजे असं नाही म्हणजे काय त्याने काय होणार आहे की तुमचा एरिया मॅक्सिमम होऊ शकतो एरिया खूप जास्ती घेतला जाऊ शकतो त्या सर्किटनी 
आणि म्हणून मग आपण ते सगळे कॉम्पोनंट असे राऊट करतो की जेणेकरून चिप एरिया जो आहे तो मिनिमम लागेल ओके अँड देन अगेन वी गो फॉर द जनरेटिंग पोस्ट फिटिंग टायमिंग नेटलिस्ट अँड देन पोस्ट फिटिंग टायमिंग सिम्युलेशन म्हणजे आता हे केल्यानंतर परत एकदा आपण सिम्युलेशन करतो अँड देन वी जनरेट अ प्रोग्रामिंग फाईल विच कुड बी डाउनलोडेड ऑन अ फिजिकल डिव्हाइस दॅट मीन्स द फिजिकल डिव्हायसेस दॅट आर अव्हेलेबल इन द मार्केट लाईक एफ पी जी एज ऑर सी पी एल डी ऑर एनी असे सो फॉर दॅट वी आर गोईंग म्हणजे आपण एवढ्या सगळ्या प्रोसेसेस करतो पण यातल्या आतापर्यंत आपण फक्त इथंपर्यंतच गेलो म्हणजे आपण स्पेसिफिकेशन मिळाल्यानंतर व्ही एच डी एल कोड लिहितो त्याच्यापासून आपण आर टी एल फंक्शनल नेटलिस्ट जनरेट करतो आणि त्याच्यानंतर त्याचं सिम्युलेशन करतो इथंपर्यंतचीच आपण प्रोसेस केली आहे याच्या पुढच्या ज्या स्टेप्स आहेत त्या आपण फॉलोच नाही केलेल्या ओके सो वी हॅव डन टिल दिस ओके सो दिस इज ऍक्च्युली दिस इज द फुल व्ही एच डी एल डिझाईन फ्लो नाऊ ऍज वी हॅव डिस्कस दिस अर्लियर देर आर डिफरंट ई डी ए टूल्स दॅट आर अव्हेलेबल सो दॅट इज फ्रॉम अल्टेरा कॉटस टू देन फ्रॉम झायलिंग्स आय एस सी दॅट वी आर युजिंग बट ऑल्सो देर इज अ मेंटर ग्राफिक्स प्रिसिजन आर टी एल अँड लिओनार्डो स्पेक्टर अँड मॉडेल सिम ओके सो आय हॅव सजेस्टेड दिस टूल फॉर यू दॅट यू कॅन यू गो फॉर दिस मॉडेल सिम टूल इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू डाउनलोड झायलिंग्स आय एस सी ओके सो यू कॅन गो फॉर दिस टूल देन वी हॅव सिनॉप्सिस अँड सिम्प्लिसिटी दॅट इज अनदर ई डी ए टूल देन कॅडन्स uh the nc sim that is also and aldec active hdl these are the different simulation tools that are present in the uh market okay so you can opt for any one of this we are using this dialing sic tool uh so now let us come actually towards what is vhdl okay so vhdl uh there are different fundamental units uh, which are present in a vhdl so we know that uh, here this are the basic three units uh, or sections of any vhdl code the first part that is a library and package declaration part then second part that is a entity declaration and third part that is a architecture okay so this will be present in each and every vhdl code okay tyachyamadhe pahilanda apan library declaration karto tyachyanantar entity declaration and architecture declaration okay in a library declaration there is a package declaration okay that we need to do and in that we are declaring actually in a package there are different functions then procedures and there are certain declaration regarding component signal then constant type sub type alias etc that are there and other designs if you want to include then that can be also included in the library okay so these are the basic functional sections of vhdl code now let us have a look again of what is mean by libraries and packages okay so what is library library that is a set of packages or components and functions okay so that means actually uh, we have different components पण प्रत्येक वेळा म्हणजे मला प्रत्येक बऱ्याच सर्किट मध्ये आता मी डिजिटल डिझाईन सर्किट करते आहे म्हणजे दॅट मीन्स yes uh if i'm designing a digital circuit that means uh, i need uh, to use uh, so many logic gates okay and then uh, it is uh, simply uh, very difficult to each time design the same components okay so what those component which are the basic units of a digital circuits that can be uh, Uh, available or that could be made available in certain package and then that is used by the user okay so that uh, libraries are the uh, that set which provides this set of different packages and component as well as functions okay then these uh, packages that provide a collection of related data types and sub program so whenever we are declaring a library in any vhdl code the syntax for that is a library and then library name okay then after that to declare the package we need to use a syntax that is a use then the library name that means the, the library name that is, in which that package is available so that library name then dot 
library package name dot all okay so what it will do so mostly uh, we are using idrpli li uh, library okay so most of the functions that are available in that so we are using idrpli library that by default okay so this idrpli is the name of that library so the first sentence that will or syntax that will be library idrpli okay and then we are going to use a package okay standard package that we are using in each of the program that is the std underscore logic underscore 116 okay so this is the package in which all basic functions that are available basic components that are available in that package so we are using that package okay so this is the one example for the library declaration atta paryanta apan jevde pan programs lihile ani simulate kele तिथे तुम्ही बघितलं असेल की मी प्रत्येक वेळेला हे लायब्ररी वापरली म्हणजे मी जरी नाही वापरले तरी पण बाय डिफॉल्ट जेव्हा आपला प्रोग्राम स्केलेटन आपल्याला मिळतो किंवा म्हणजे तो प्रोग्राम आपल्याला त्या विंडो मध्ये ओपन होतो जेव्हा आपण इव्हेंटिटीचे इनपुट स्पोर्ट आणि आउटपुट स्पोर्ट म्हणजे तर तुम्हाला ही लायब्ररी ऍड झालेली दिसेल ओके सो दिस इज द लायब्ररी ऍड रिपली दॅट विल गेट ऍडेड इन द प्रोग्राम ओके सो वी नीड टू डिक्लेअर दिस लायब्ररी देअर okay then uh, the another part of this bhdl code that is a ntt architectures and configuration okay so the structure of bhdl design that resembles the structure of modern object oriented software design all bhdl designs that provide an external interface and internal implementation a vhdl design that consists of entities architectures and configuration okay so here this is the uh, way each of this architecture uh, that is which is related with uh, this entity okay so here this is about the entities okay so we are uh, having entities that is means it is the specification of the design external interface okay what will be present externally of that design okay manje kutla pins available asnar at externally so that is decided with the entity entity declaration uh, specify name of the entity then a set of generic declaration specify instance uh, specifying instance specific parameters and then a set of code declaration defining the inputs and output of hardware design uh here in this uh entity generic declaration and code declarations that are optional okay now generic declaration that means those uh declarations which are uh, generic for that uh, program so that are the generic declaration and the code declaration that means these are the declarations related with the input ports or the output ports of that design okay now uh these uh declaration of these two part these two is optional okay you can if you want you can declare otherwise you can skip this part okay whenever you, you are using a component okay so that time there is no need to declare ports okay so in that case that you need to skip that declaration part okay but otherwise uh, this Uh, syntax for entity that looks like this that is the entity then we need to give a entity name and then is this is the keyword that we are using then after that generic declaration part so whatever are the generic uh, functions or generic uh, data types that we need to declare here and then after that there will be port declaration that means if we want to have a generic declaration in the entity that must be first present in the entity declaration okay and then it will be followed by port declaration okay then there is the entity declarative items like constants type signals that will be present and then end of this entity and here for ending of this entity we need to have a keyword end and after that it will be followed by whatever entity name that we have given okay this is now whatever is the written here in the square bracket that is the optional part okay tumhala jar garaj vatli tar te te laha otherwise jeu naka but actually this is the good practice to write a name of the entity at the ending of also okay so just have this practice to write a name there 
then generic declaration these are the uh, constants that can be used to control the structure or behavior of the entity and the syntax for this is the generic in the bracket constant name and then type of that constant and after that initial value okay so that means what will be the initial value of that constant that could be declared here so if there are more constants that are present then it will, each will be separated with a semicolon there okay so initial value that is also optional uh, but it uh, is required whenever it is a constant so that need to be specified with the initial value for that constant so this is the generic declaration then after that port declaration the port declaration that specifies the input and output ports of the entity so what are the inputs to that entity and what are the output for your design that is defined in this port declaration part and the syntax for this is port in the bracket this port is a keyword port in the bracket port name okay so this is the user defined and then after that mode of that that means whether it is a input type or it is a output type or it is a in out or it is a buffer okay so that could be mentioned here and then type that means whatever is the data type uh, that is mentioned here okay ata tumhi bagitla asel ki apan pratyek vela jeva program ghetto teva manje samjha majha a and b he inputs ait tar mag apan kay karto इथे मेन्शन करतो की ए पोर्ट आहे देन त्याच्यानंतर कोलन अँड देन टाईप इनपुट पोर्ट ओके सो वी राईट देअर अ कीवर्ड दॅट इज अ इन ओके अँड देन आफ्टर दॅट इट फॉलोज विथ अ एस टी डी एंडो स्कोअर लॉजिक इफ इट इज अ सिंगल बिट ओके सो बिकॉज आज द एस टी डी एंडो स्कोअर लॉजिक डेटा टाईप दॅट हॅज मोर व्हॅल्यूज ओके सो वी आर युझिंग दॅट ओके वी वन्स अगेन गोईंग टू रिवाईज द अबाउट दॅट आफ्टरवर्स सो we are using there now if it is a output then we write here as a y is the output so y colon out then it is a std underscore logic or if it is a vector then std underscore logic underscore vector so that type of uh, declaration that we do okay so that means here the port name that means it is the name that is given by the user for that port then mode which specifies direction of the port signal and type that specifies the data type of the port and initial value that specifies the initial value for a port suppose you want to initialize any value for that port in a then that you can do here okay now as uh, we have discussed this uh, thing so many times that vhdl is not a case sensitive that means whenever you are going to give a name to any port or whatever you user want to define there so he can write in any case okay suppose i that means here this is one example that x y z all these are the you know small lower case okay so it is similar to that of x capital y small z or it is similar to x y z all in a capital ओके तुम्ही काहीही लिहिलं म्हणजे तुमचा जरी टायपिंग एरर झाला तिथे कॅपिटल तुम्ही लोअर केसमध्ये लिहिलं किंवा अपर केसमध्ये लिहिलं काहीच फरक पडणार नाहीये तुम्ही कुठल्याही केसमध्ये लिहा त्याने काही तुमच्या प्रोग्राम मध्ये काही डिफरन्स होणार नाहीये इट विल बी कन्सिडर एज अ एक्स वाय झेड सो दिस इज अबाउट द पोर्ट डिक्लरेशन ओके सो हिअर इन व्ही एच डी एल देर आर ports that is a input port output port in out port that means it is a bidirectional port and buffer that means it is a buffered output port so this is specified here input that means direction inside the circuit output port that means direction out of the circuit then in out that means it is uh, having both the direction and buffer that means it is a buffered output same uh, input as well as output that is the okay so that is a buffered output uh, now whenever you are giving a name to any of the port that time you need to remember that you have to start that name with a letter okay and then it can consist of any uh, letters or digits and underscore okay only special character that can be used in a vhdl that is a underscore okay so that you can use in a port names okay. 
So this IEEE standard 1164-1193 that defines a package which provides a set of data types that are useful in logic synthesis. The external pins of synthesizable design that must be data types specified in the std underscore logic underscore 1164 package. IEEE recommends the use of uh, data type that is the std underscore logic or std underscore logic underscore vector. Okay, so this is the uh, data type that is recommended by IEEE. So most of the time we are using these data types. Okay, so here whenever we are declaring any entity, we can declare in this way. This is the syntax actually. I will see. That is the entity. Then entity name is then port. Then these are the different ports. Then uh, which are separated here with a colon. Then direction of that port and then type of that port and then end of the entity. Okay. So this is the entity declaration part and then this is one is the example. Now you know that for a AND gate we have two inputs. That is the A and B. These are the two inputs and suppose C is the output. So we can uh, declare entity for that as a entity. Then name for that entity. Okay. So here it is mentioned as a AND gate. And then keyword is and then port. Okay, so after that we don't have here generic declaration part, so we have <coughs> skipped that. And then uh, input for a colon in. That means it is an input port, and it is of the type bit. Okay, so instead of having this type as a bit, you can go for std underscore logic also, and then it will be separate uh, ended with a semicolon. Okay. Then after that, second uh, port declaration, then third port declaration, and at the end of this declaration, uh, bracket will get completed, and then after that bracket there will be semicolon. Okay, inside this there is a no semicolon, but it is outside of this bracket. Okay, so you have to remember that just the last shift so the port upon declare करना रहे ताचा shift ही नहीं दायचा semicolon. तो तिथे अपन ब्रैकेट कंप्लीट करना रहे हैं एंड वो ब्रैकेट जब बाहर सेमीकोलन दे तो ओके एंड देन एंड ऑफ दिस एंटिटी तो एंड ऑफ एंड गेट सो दैट इज अबाउट द एंटिटी डिक्लेरेशन ओके सो दिस फॉर टुडे ओके वी विल हैव दिस मच डिस्कशन ओनली इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट नाउ यू कैन आस आतापर्यंत याच्यामध्ये काही डाऊट आहे का कुणाला 